the phone and the computer on? That's better. Peggy. Peggy. Yes. This is, this is Cara Whittam. I move to approve the agenda. Thank you, Cara. May I have a, go ahead. May I have a second? Yeah. Hey, this is Jerry. This is Jerry Sweet in Winnipeg. Hello. I don't know why I'm getting an echo. I can't hear you on my on my um, computer anymore. Um, but but before, before we approve the agenda, agenda, can I ask one, one question? question? May I have a second, Jerry? Uh, hello. To Wayne be Burwatt. Wayne, uh, thank you. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is Jerry Sweet in Winnipeg. For well, some reason, I have lost the sound on the computer. But before we approve the agenda, may I ask a question? Yes. And that is, where on the agenda are we supposed to be looking at the questions? That will be at the end of the formal session. Okay, okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Peggy, this is oh, Tina Collins. Yes, Tina. I would like to make a request, if possible, for a deferment of agenda item E, that is the sense of the financial statement. Yes. To another time, um, you, may, you are we, aware. Okay. Um, Go ahead. Tina, I suggest that you make your suggestion when we get to that part of the agenda, please. Okay. Okay, thank you. So anything that you want to change that is already on the agenda, would you please consider it then? I have a few more things to say in my opening remarks, um, which is, on behalf of the board, I apologize for the lateness of sending out the audited financial statements because of the circumstances beyond our control, including the departure of the CEO, as announced earlier today. We will be spending a little more time on the financials than we normally would in order to ensure people are not negatively impacted by the business and delivery. In addition, we also have Kirsten Giles from KPMG, our public accountants, who audited our financial statements and who will be given an opportunity to address any questions that may be asked. So following that statement, uh, and I'd like to, uh, here, if there's anyone opposed to the approval of the agenda, please. I take it that it's carried then, and we will now have a roll call. Okay, if we can start uh, with a roll call, I'm going to read out the, uh, the names as they appear in my participant list. Um, and then, uh, as we get to the bottom, there are some phone numbers there. I might just ask who it is in what area, and uh, if you could just say that you are here, that would be great. Yeah. Peggy. Peggy. Yes. May I ask one question, or it's not a question, it's a request. Who's speaking? Tara. Tara, yes. Could each person, when they say I, or make a comment, please identify themselves? Absolutely. I, I, uh, I completely concur with that request. Thank you. All right, we'll start with our roll call. Actually, I have received a list for Marilyn just with the uh, list of all the different members on the board and the category members. I'd like to just go through this in order. And if you uh, uh, if you're here, please just state that. Who, who is I? Robert. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, so Peggy Hambly is here. Eva Haveras. Here. Yeah. Tony Eames. Not here. Not here. No, he has a family emergency. Doug Orr. Yes, I'm here. This is Doug. Lisa Lazarus. Jeff Lisa. Lisa, were you able to join the call? Not right now. She is trying to get onto the call, so we will uh, we'll hold that for later. 
Dominique Chagnon. Dominique, are you on the call? Deanna Phelan? Yes, Deanna, I'm present. Thank you, Deanna. Ms. Saunders? I think Liz said that she was on the call before. Uh, Jorge Bernard? Okay, Craig Collins. Yes, Craig is here. Thank you, Craig. Charles Q. Yes, Charlie is here. Meg Kruger. Yes, Meg is here. Thank you, Meg. Uh, Rupert May. Yes, Rupert is here. Rupert. Robert Mitchell. Uh, yes, Rob is here. Thank you. Carla Robin. Yes, Carla is here. Thank you, Carla. Chris Sorensen. Chris is here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, now for category A members, Peter Gray. Michelle LaPierre. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. Mike Lawrence. Yes, Mike is here. Thank you, Mike. Terrence Miller. Yes, Terrence is here. Thank you, Terrence. Ray Pohl. Raya. Terry O'Brennan. Yes, Terry is here. Thank you, Terry. Charlene Kostecki. Sorry, Charlene, are you here? Elizabeth. Yes, Elizabeth is here. Cara Whitham. Yes, Cara is here. Thank you, Cara. Category B, Nicole DePlessis. Yes, I am there. Thank you. Adrian Smith. Yes, Adrian is here. Thank you. Jerry Sweet. Yes, Jerry Sweet's here. Thank you, Jerry. Jess Anthony. Yes, Jess is here. Great. Thank you, Jess. Mark Nelson. Yes, present. Brenda Gilchrist. Yes, Brenda's here. Thank you, Brenda. Gordon McKenzie. Yes, Gordon's here. Thank you, Gordon. Lauren Parker. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Lauren. And Heather Findlay. Yes, Heather is here. Thank you, Heather. Category C members, Jill Barton. No Jill. David Brent. David Brent. Yes, here. Tina Collins. Yes, present. Terry Jones. Terry's here. Thank you, Terry. Sue Ockenden. Sue Ockenden is here. Thank you, Sue. Wayne Burwash. Wayne Burwash is here. Great, thank you, Wayne. Barb Blackwell. Yes, I'm here. Thank you, Barb. Gary, I'm never going to get your last name right. <laughs> I'm yeah. here. Gishuliak, is that is that it? Right. Close thank enough. You. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. Yeah, and uh, Muriel Burnley. Muriel, are you here? No. Nope. Uh, and then Kirsten Giles, public accountant. Yes, Kirsten is here. Thank you, Kirsten. And Gord Peterson. Yes, I'm here. You are wonderful, Gord. Thank you. Robert, it's Liz. I don't know if you heard me on here. Great, Liz. Thanks. I, I do have you here. I remember you saying something about your dog. <laughs> okay, so I'll pass it back to Peggy now, and we'll continue on with the agenda. Yeah, thank hey, you, Robert. Robert. Oh, sorry. Uh, how many of the current board of directors are online? There seem quite a few absentees. Uh, Tony, and I'll, I'll just give you a rundown. I'm on, obviously. Um, Doug Orr is on. Liz is on. Deanna is on. I just received a note from Dominique that she has a, a problem at home, but will be joining us. Uh, Lisa Lazarus is having some trouble um, logging on from Singapore. And um, Tony Ames has a, 
personal problem that will not allow him to attend this evening. He sent his regrets. And the same for Jorge. Any other questions about the roll call? So we got four absentees, right? We do right now. Uh, we're hoping that Lisa and Dominique both make the call. We're working to ensure that they both manage to be on. <clears throat> the other two I don't expect. But it's, it's really just Tony then. Um, so may we have a motion to approve the adoption of minutes from the previous annual meeting? Jerry Sweet, so approved. Thank you. Sue Alkenden. Thank Second you. It. Is there any discussion about these minutes or additions? No? Any opposed? Thank you, then that is carried. Uh, which brings us to the report of the audit committee, and that would be Doug. Yeah, I'm happy to speak to that. Uh, let me just bring it up here so that I can know. Uh, uh, everyone should have received a copy of this, and again, uh, as Peggy has pointed out, um, we uh, desperately apologize um, for the lateness of some of these documents getting out. Um, by the time we uh, completed the uh, audit and other things, uh, we were running a bit late, but wanted to ensure everybody had everything in their hands. I will not read this document to you, but I will summarize uh, a few bits of information from it uh, that may, may be of interest and uh, uh, present it to you. Um, we uh, received from the auditor um, in, uh, I believe it was August 25th, the draft copy of the auditor's report and the um, uh, audited financial statement. We called a meeting of the uh, Equestrian Canada Finance and Audit Committee as soon as we could uh, have everyone join us on a meeting, which was August 29th, and uh, received the report from uh, Kirsten Giles from KPMG. Um, at that time, we received uh, an incredibly clear and articulate ex explanation uh, of the documents that were presented by KPMG and our committee surfaced a few things from it uh, that we wanted to share with uh, with our members at this meeting. Uh, the first comment was uh, that we received was that uh, both the CEO and the controller um, were uh, particularly commended as well as all of the financial management administrative staff um, for um, the work that they did to prepare documents for the auditor. Um, and. Uh, they were complimented on their, their openness, cooperation, assistance, and their ability to provide data as it was required. Um, we were also pleased that the auditor pointed out again the fact to us that uh, not-for-profit organizations um, are, if they are going to accrue funds, uh, they are not investment funds, but in fact are funds that need to be accrued. They can be held in reserve and uh, used for clearly demonstrated purposes fall within the purview. Um, can I get somebody to mute their mic? I'm getting a lot of feedback here. Um, thank you. That uh, if we could have, uh, so that uh, what happened is, uh, sorry, I'll just pick up from where I was here. Um, emphasize the fact that, that the reserve funds that we keep that are uh, colloquially referred to in our accounting as restricted funds um, are actually uh, specified for particular purposes and uh, it was encouraged that we continue to develop policy uh, to define and delineate how we collect, allocate, and disburse uh, these re reserve funds. Um, so uh, that was, and, and I'll, I'll let Kirsten speak more about that if, if uh, she feels she needs to, but we were very happy that uh, that was identified. Uh, the comment that was presented to the audit committee was that uh, the, uh, the manner in which we currently allocate them uh, seems to be um, uh, acceptable under the not-for-profit act. One of the big issues, of course, with our accounting this year and everyone who has been on any of these calls that we've had over the past little while, the transition from MS-DOS, the old MS-DOS, ACPAC, and that dynamics system um, did create 
a, a fair bit of challenge uh, internally for our for our teams and management uh, folks uh, worked um, incredibly hard to to overcome some of those challenges and it was felt that was a significant factor in some of the accounting challenges that we faced. Nevertheless, it was reported that our team uh, appears to be uh, certainly up to speed, very confident um, and, and competent with the, the new system and that they were able to report, uh, uh, prepare reports to the auditors as requested. Um, and then uh, finally, it said that the, uh, the, the work done, we reported to the board that the work done uh, by the executive and financial teams to uh, provide more specificity, and I'm sure that question <laughs> tonight, and we would like to, uh, to deal with that. Uh, our goal is to provide uh, quite a bit more specificity with regard to uh, exactly where funding comes from and be able to identify exactly where it goes to. Uh, from that, uh, that was our report to, to us from the auditor. We as a committee met to uh, review the report from uh, KPMG and we had four recommendations uh, that we put forward to the board of directors. Uh, the first recommendation, and I know uh, we have had numerous discussions about this uh, at our meetings with the members, uh, it is absolutely imperative and essential that uh, our month end and quarterly financial re reporting be brought up to date. Um, I can report that a financial team is working literally overtime, uh, seven days a week in some cases, uh, to uh, try to get us up to speed. And that is a priority for our financial team. But we did recommend to the board that, that uh, uh, be addressed and continue to be addressed as it is. A uh, couple of other points is that uh, there are some, some things outstanding projects that we've started on uh, that need to be continued. Uh, one is that we need to create uh, financial policy, uh, find financial policy that exists, uh, edit what's there, revise what's there, update and write new financial policy. And the Finance Audit Committee in collaboration with the executive team has been tasked with that. Uh, our third recommendation to the board was that those same teams uh, continue to collaborate uh, to investigate the issue of what appear to be over this report period and potentially declining revenues. Um, and so what we want to do is we want to uh, spend some time uh, in collaboration with our financial and uh, and management teams to identify if this is in fact the case, and if so, uh, what may account for some of these unanticipated deficiencies, and identify ways of either rectifying that trend uh, and or reducing our expenses concomitantly. And then the final suggestion uh, from the audit committee to the board um, was that the executive team, again in collaboration with the board and the finance committee, uh, continue to refine the tracking and specific designation and allocation of revenue and expenses and Im improve that uh, as our system uh, approves, uh, improves. Um, so that, that was the report we presented to the board and we respectfully re uh, present that as well to the, uh, the, the members. Are there any questions for Doug? Hello? Can't hear. It's okay. Are there any questions for Doug? Just, just probably because this is Jerry Sweet in Winnipeg. Just probably because I am not financially astute at all, considering the fact that both your um, recommend or your comments from the audit general and so on were so good. Why have we been asking for some more information about the financials and the audits? and so on for quite some time before we got anything and in fact finally got it in the last day or two. Yeah, and, and I, I think I, I addressed that, Jerry, but I'll, I'll just reiterate. Um, we have had a, 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 over over the, the year or more uh, significant difficulties, not with the finances, but with the accounting, keeping the accounting on track and tracking things. And our team, uh, the account, the, the audit began on time, and the account, uh, our, our financial team were able to, to supply documents to uh, our, our auditors. So I'm, there's been a bit of misunderstanding about the inability to produce audited statements and the inability to produce statements. Uh, I will certainly uh, agree with the members and with your comment, Jerry, that 
our inability to produce financial documents in a timely manner is um, unacceptable and we are working to dig ourselves out of that hole. Uh, we haven't got there yet. Uh, we're, we're getting up to speed. I think that's a different comment than the ability to produce audited statements. And I'll let Rob uh, add a comment here as well. Um, I would like to just state that uh, I would hope that everybody would be aware that every, every stakeholder requires information in a different fashion, in a different way, reported it in a different format. Um, so what we were able to do with completing this audit with Kirsten and her team um, had the, uh, the information presented in one way and it took quite a lot um, to actually get through that um, and give them everything that they needed in order for us to get our clean audit, um, our, our clean audit opinion uh, from them. Going forward, uh, we will be trying to and, and as we try and catch up on the months in the coming, uh, coming weeks uh, that we are behind by, um, it's my mandate and my desire to work on getting monthly statements out, um, but in, in different formats. I mean, what we have, we had a complete revamp of our full accounting system, uh, and we've had to go to an entirely new way of reporting. And, and as a part of that, um, there's a lot of work on the back end to be done to ensure that everybody receives information in an appropriate fashion and in a timely fashion. Um, so what we, what the step we're at right now is that we have come through the audit, um, a terribly difficult audit, uh, and now, now that we've come through that and we've um, we've uh, lived up to the expectations of the public auditing firm, uh, now is the time to take that audited data that we have and put it in a format that's acceptable to our community. Uh, that's not something that we are going to forget about. It's something that we're going to continue to do, um, and uh, and I just I would appreciate uh, you know if if people can remember that different. Uh, different stakeholder groups are going to require the information in a different way and we can't just at this point um, magically click our fingers and, and make it in that different format. So I, we are working on it. I do in, uh, I do understand uh, the pain that has come from the volunteer side of having to fly blind this time. Um, and like I say, it's my intention to try and, and honor um, everybody's efforts that they're putting in as we go forward. Thanks, Rob. Thank you. If I may just add one comment, and that is, um, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of the provinces right now, uh, and when I can think about how much money is coming to EC from the provinces, you must understand, and I, I, I think you've addressed this at least partially, you're giving me the impression that we're going to be hearing things a lot more re frequently in the future, um, but when you're taking that much money from us, it's pretty hard for us to keep going and giving you more if we don't know what's happening to it. I, I, I think that's there. a fair comment, Jerry. I'll just jump in, Rob, and then let you jump on top of me. I just okay. want to say <laughs> I totally agree, Jerry, and we're um, we are in the process of uh, and we're we're hoping in the next few days to release our uh, our budget information publicly the same way we did some of our financial information. And one of our mandates is to be much better able to provide. Uh, information of that kind of detail for you. Sorry, Thank Rob. you very much. No, Go ahead, no worries, Doug. I, I agree. Um, I agree both with Doug and Jerry. The information that we're providing um, right now, um, we don't uh, we don't provide it, and we've got a lot of people who are giving a lot of money in many different ways. Um, and so, uh, it is absolutely our intent to make sure we honor that. Uh, that contribution, and that we respect that by giving information back to you that shows you how it's being used. Robert, this is Wayne Burwash. Um, the one thing, uh, as far as making things clear, I, I really like that financial update uh, that was put out earlier. Uh, the only thing that I had a real problem with is trying to mother up everything uh, with the financials. It seemed like the breakdown of uh, the different categories, both in revenues and expenses, uh, were called different things. And so um, <laughs> suggest that they use the same sort of chart of accounts and the same uh, breakdown so that a person can get them uh, 
coordinated because uh, I, I think that update was excellent, but I, as I say, I can't uh, coordinate it exactly with and mother it up with the actual financials. No, I appreciate that, Wayne. Um, what we're uh, what we're coming through um, the implementation of this financial system didn't go as smoothly as we had hoped, and uh, and then the education that came behind that to help everybody who was going to be using the financial system in house here. Um, coding receipts and, and so on. Um, it just uh, it didn't happen in a way that we would have hoped it would have. Um, and so as a part of that, we had, uh, you know, we do have one um, GL system where everybody uses the same the same GL, the same uh, account balances, and then we, uh, we differentiate with department codes. Um, but uh, as we've come to refine that system going forward, we've we've sat down, I've spent time with the discipline managers and with other people who have budgets. And we've already started discussions around how we can improve that system to make sure that we're reporting um, equally across the organization in a way that can be uh, that you can extrapolate information easily from. Um, and so, as a part of that, you know, it, it's not a perfect system, and it, it wasn't. Uh, you know, we've got a ways to go yet, but but we've got a lot of buy-in for making sure that we're able to, uh, as you say, marry that up uh, so the information matches across all the departments that we have here. Yeah, and I appreciate that comment, Wayne, as well, because that, that is a, a priority. And moving from the one system to the other, that's when we realized we were really lacking in, in exactly that ability. And it, it is a priority for us as well. So I really appreciate that comment. And even when we were preparing the public release, I had the same problem as you. I thought, well, this came from here, but we you know went there. And we really are, are looking forward to with, with the new system and as we get up to speed on it, being far better able to track that. And I do appreciate, Wayne, you catching the fact that I stuck legal, legal and audit on the wrong line somewhere else on that chart when I built it. I'll take full responsibility for that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Are there more questions? Uh, is there anything, would any of the members like to address Kirsten while she's on the call with us? Are there any questions for the uh, uh, for the auditors that, that you'd like to know anything about the process we went through or um, or her views on on our books anything like that i'm going to take that silence as the fact that everybody's pretty happy with this i wouldn't do that <laughs> i'm just i'm in an optimistic mood tonight no, I'm not. Just a comment. I I find it surprising that her response to us was as favorable as it was, considering the number of concerns that have come from all three of the major groups within the organization over the last year. I I think she was very kind to you, to be quite honest. Um, if I may speak to that point, actually, you're right. So we, we do always consider the circumstances surrounding our audit and our procedures. So essentially, when we came out, we knew that Rob was working with uh, a number of department managers and Eva as well uh, for some very long and extended periods of time in order to make sure that we had the most accurate information that we could work with. Uh, one thing I'm able to do as an audit manager is be able to separate the, um, you know, operational difficulties from the actual financial statement audit. So I was already looking at, if you will, a, a combined or a consolidated uh, statement. It was just a matter of where those final numbers ended up being. So from our perspective, from an audit perspective anyway, we were able to audit, you know, revenues, expenses, cash, <clears throat> investments, all these different pieces on that basis and so that's how we were able to complete the audit it was certainly the uh, by department or even the additional sport canada uh, disclosure that was required this year at the end of the financial statements that took uh, quite a bit more time to prepare but we again are willing to work with our clients that we know are working with us to make sure that we have the information we need but from an audit perspective, we certainly didn't have any difficulty obtaining the information we asked for, of viewing the information that we had requested, or uh, coming to a conclusion on that information. So that's why we were able to issue a clean audit opinion. Thank you. Are, are, 
Are there more questions? Anyone else have a question to ask before we move on to acceptance of the financial statements, which Tina has uh, asked for a deferment and I'm asking, do you all feel that way? Would you like to ask any further questions of the actual statements? Do you feel more confident now? Perhaps we should hear from Tina. Um, thank you. Um, I would just like to suggest a request a deferment of the acceptance of the financial statements. As we're all aware, we, see, we received them late. Um, it was also past the deadline for our submitted questions. Um, I think it would just be um, <clears throat> very diligent of us to have the time to properly review them, gain some input, and formulate questions to go back to the board. That's fair this enough. Is, this is Go ahead. Terrence. It's Terrence Miller. Could I speak? Good late, Torchy. Terrence. Thank you. I, I would like to echo what Tina has said, uh, certainly from a jumping world's perspective. Uh, I think uh, we need much more time to digest the numbers, ask more questions, uh, and uh, I would also like to add in that a a member of the medications committee spoke to me and uh, they felt they had far too little information uh, in, in the report that they saw uh, to really understand the numbers that were put up and they need more detail as well. So on, on that basis, I would support Tina's position. Thank you. Any other comments? I would support uh, as well. Carrie, jo yeah, sorry, Mike Lawrence. And Carrie Johnson, I'd support it as well. Thank you. Uh, Gord Peterson, is there uh, any any legal issues by differing? No, in fact, depending upon how you decide what you want to do on some of the other issues in the uh, in the report, you may very well want to defer and come back right before you have your board meeting to give people an opportunity to go through it and ask questions and then to bring it up when everyone's at the in-person board meeting. So it, it may be a, an opportunity to do it at that time and just have the, uh, the matter suspended until that time and deferred until that time and, uh, and address it then. So you're talking about next week? Correct. Okay. Is it, would you be in favor of that, uh, Tina Torchy? Excuse me, Terrence, I'll get it one day. I would be okay with that, Peggy. This is Tina. Okay. Yeah, if it was uh, uh, late then next week, I, I, I would be in favor. Yeah, myself also, Mike. Okay. This is Jerry again. You might have expected that. Um, any kind of discussion, I, I, I don't, I don't um, dismiss any of this, but I think if there is going to be any kind of discussion that uh, is associated with this, to be a discussion that any of the 27 voting members knows what's going on. Absolutely. Certainly, Jerry, and I think that we are all open to open discussion. Yeah, but if we don't know what's being discussed, we can't discuss them. Oh, for God. I, I don't understand. You're I heard right. that, and I understand. You might I understand. I don't understand what you're saying, so can you clarify that? I'm, I'm just suggesting I'm not disagreeing with Tina at all. I think it's a very good idea to hold this for the time being because we did only get it to look at very recently. But any kind of discussion of anything to do with the audit and of the financials for the organization needs to be a discussion with all groups. Jerry, just so you, it's Gord Peterson speaking. So just so you understand what I was proposing was you would reconvene the meeting on the, the third or the fourth to have that very discussion that you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. That's what I was saying is we would just do it at the uh, when at the board was all in person doing it. You would just tie all the other people in by phone. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Yes, absolutely. So we'll note that in the minutes, please. <coughs> For this to be effective, of course, this depends on the various constituents groups getting the detailed finances that they require to uh, allow us to support uh, voting for the 
audited statement. Or, True. Uh, is that you? Absolutely. Sorry, Terrence, was that you just speaking? Yes, it was. Okay, this is Rob. Um, I, I completely agree with that. I was working with um, um, uh, Dr. Rossi. Eve Rossier uh, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and again this morning, getting him the detailed information that they need for equine meds. Um, during the audit, I did spend two and a half weeks with, with Karen um, and again with Christine uh, here in the office going over the discipline budgets, and I do still owe Fleur some of my time. Um, but we are, I, I am working my way through, as you can imagine, there are quite a number of people to get to, uh, but we are, it is my intent not to hide anything. It, it's not, uh, there's nothing in there that uh, needs to be, well, you should all get a chance to view things in a level of detail um, that will uh, that will be both acceptable to EC and allow you to comfortably make the vote that you need to make. Thank you. Thank you, Rob. Very welcome. Rob, Peggy, this is Craig. All right. Excuse me. Go ahead, Craig. Um, that all sounds uh, wonderful. I wonder if um, if the date that we were talking about provides Rob enough opportunity to get the level of detail that's been asked for. Excellent question. Not <laughs> likely for everyone. Um, I mean, there are a few who I did not get to yet, and I think what I need to do is, uh, is empower the discipline managers to speak with their own uh, committees and, and then with the uh, relevant members. Uh, once they can do that, if I can catch up with the people who have not yet been seen, um, equine meds and, and others, uh, get them the detail they need, likely the end of next week would be, uh, would be appropriate. But if I have to get to every group myself again, it, it probably wouldn't happen that time. Thanks, Rob. So may I make a suggestion that um, there's no sense setting a deadline such as this that if we're not going to be able to achieve it, is there another deadline, uh, Gord, that maybe would advise for this type of thing? Well, I think, I think you'd like to uh, uh, finalize the uh, audited statement before the new board right. takes effect, I think. If any more, yeah. um, that would be my recommendation in any event, so that the new board is starting with a clean slate. Um, you know, I, I mean, the, the question is whether or not, uh, Robert, do you, know, do you have a feeling for how long it will take you to uh, get the information to people? Um, it, if, if I can get a sense of really voting members, um, who it is that is currently missing information uh, that has not been spoken to, that will give me a better idea. As it stands right now, I know I have to speak with, uh, with Fleur on the eventing amounts, um, with, uh, with John on the para amounts, and with, um, yeah. with Eve on the uh, equine meds. I think those are the last three that I need to get to. Um, but I could certainly communicate this first thing tomorrow morning with everybody and let you know an estimate of whether I think it'd be possible. If I, if I could just bring up, I, uh, I was told that it was a requirement that uh, the statements be provided 21 days prior to a AGM or a meeting or whatever, and 21 days would have sufficed, but uh, I think Craig's making a valid point for uh, the, these committees to have all the information they need, given that this is, uh, you know, when we're speaking of a matter of a few days before we come together again. Thank I, I you. The question, Go ahead. How do, the question, it's, sorry, it's Gord again. The question would be how do the, the new board members feel about taking office with the, uh, the uncertainty of the completion of the financials? That's the, the, the best way I can phrase it. But I don't think that's the ideal scenario for sure. Now, I, I think one thing I think we need to keep in mind is that th this was a, a very, very long, arduous, difficult um, set of financials to put together for many reasons, most of which you were all painfully aware. Um, but it is done and it is a beginning. And, and I think perhaps we need to look at it from that point of view as well. Uh, can I add something again? Sorry. Um, I agree. Uh, I agree with, with Tina's 
comments to begin with. And I also agree with what Tony is saying here about time frames and so on. But I think it's so important right now for us to get all of this right, because that seems to have been part of the problem. So if we need more than 10 days or more than three days or whatever, is it a good idea at this point to put a specific time limit or should we be saying um, given so many days and then we can readdress whether we need to have it for any more? What's uh, right, now, what's right now, I just see so much of what's going on as where things seem to have been partially done or, or um, not quite as far as you would want to be. And I really think with a new board coming in and a new year coming up, if we can make sure that we start that off as as far as possible, right on top of everything, it, it is important. This is Tina. I agree with Gary's comments. Uh, Peggy, this is Craig. Go ahead, Craig. Thank you. Um, and, and, and perhaps um, as an incoming board member, um, I certainly agree with Gord that we need to um, be in a position where financial statements are in order. And I suspect that the fact that they've been audited by a public accounting firm, that the numbers are what they are. And the details of those numbers um, are certainly required and necessary for the various different parts of the organization that need those budgets. Is it possible to move forward at this point in time with a commitment from uh, both staff and the auditors to uh, provide those details so that they be questioned as we move forward? I think the, uh, the auditors uh, under any, any obligation to provide any further detail, I think it's coming directly from the staff. Um, but that is something that I'm definitely talking about. Yeah. Yeah, if I can make a comment, Peggy. Yes? Uh, it's just here, and I, I just um, e echo a bit what Craig said. I, 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 I'm speaking now as a. As a Sorry, everybody's got Sorry, feedback going on. Hang on, just one second. I'll give up on that. 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 I believe somebody needs it. It's somebody who is on both a phone and on a computer and has the computer speakers coming into their phone. So if anybody who's currently so on the phone could mute their, their computer speakers and go only through the phone, that would be helpful. Okay. I'll try again there. Try I just wanted to echo what Craig said. I think, Craig said, I think, um, said, I think um, oh, sorry, that's driving me crazy. That's driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah, Doug, let me mute Doug, and I will unmute you. Only the host can talk now. Okay, Doug, go ahead. Yeah, I'll just give this a quick statement. I, I, I what I hear Craig saying I, it makes a lot of sense to me, and and I'll just speak to that. That I know Rob is is working as hard as he can to provide specific details for everyone. Um, I, I don't, as Rob has pointed out, it's it's not a point of the auditor at this point. Uh, it's it's our internal uh, reporting information, and uh, I would like to echo the thought that I think the new board needs to be able to move forward from a solid standpoint, and perhaps Rob and his team commit to getting specific details out to everybody uh, as as they require them. Um, and that that's my only comment on that. Everyone can talk now. Now. Uh, this is Wayne. I, 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 oh, we're still getting here. Okay, uh, Wayne. Any, I'll try to talk about it. with Doug. Financial, the audit is 
Only the host can talk now. <sighs> Everyone can talk now. Now. No, it doesn't work. Wayne, can you try again? Wayne, can you try again? <laughs> okay. okay. I am. I am. The audited statements audited are what they are. Are. They, what they are. They aren't. They aren't. I think that I just, think uh, that just uh, people need more people detail, need more which detail, I agree with Doug, agree with Doug and, uh, and uh, that, um, that, that can explain. That can explain. So, so uh, unless I understand, I think Internet uh, requires, uh, requires us to is I move on and have another eight two weeks from now so uh, I think um, since these are audited and are what they are we can accept or whatever we need to do tonight with the kicker that uh, that the explanations and the details come forward to Torchy and to Eve and that uh, uh, that they require and the pro provincial uh, uh, offices. Any other comments? Uh, this is Gord here. Yes, please. Uh, I agree with what the guys are saying here. Uh, these statements have been audited. They've been recommended by the audit committee, and there's nothing that reviewing them is going to change them. So I would like to make a motion that we accept these financial statements as circulated. I'll second that. This is Wayne. Wayne and Gordon? Yes. Is there more discussion? If not, I'd like to call the question. Any opposed? Yes, I'm opposed. Tina Collins? Yes. Tina? Yeah. Sorry, Tina Eric Collins, Miller. opposed? Yes. Anyone Jerry else? Sweet opposed. Jerry Sweet opposed. Jerry Sweet? Mike Lawrence. Mike Lawrence. Elizabeth Query Johnson. I'm, I'm sorry. Jill Barton. Jill Barton. Elizabeth Quigg. Terrence Miller. Elizabeth. David Brent. Mark Nelson. Adrian Smith. How many voting? 27? I didn't catch the last person after Mark Nelson, please. Adrian Smith. Adrian. And Lauren Parker. Lauren Parker. And Terry O'Brennan. Terry O'Brennan. Okay, Terry 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 and, and Terry who else? Johnson. Terry? Terry Johnson. Yeah, Johnson. Thank you. And David Brent. David Brent. Gary Gushalak. Brenda Gilkert. Can I just suggest that you do a roll call and everyone can take yeah. over games and that will be the easier way of counting? Sure. Well, I have 15 opposed, but that's a very good idea. So I think we'll, we'll go for that. Um, we're just grabbing our list. Okay, starting from category A members. Gray is absent. Michelle LaPierre, opposed or in favor? Okay. Uh, Mike Lawrence. Opposed. Opposed. <clears throat> Terrence Miller. Opposed. Ray Pohl was absent. Terry O'Brennan. I'll say opposed. Charlene Kostecki wasn't here. Elizabeth Quigg. Opposed. 
Kara Whedon. I have an email from Kara saying she can't get back on. Okay. Um, if Kara can drop her connection for the meeting on the computer and pick it up just on the phone, she was the one that was um, causing the feedback loop. Uh, so I'll continue on, and then if Kara joins us again, then uh, uh, and we'll come back and get her uh, her vote. Nicole Duplessis. No. No. Opposed. Opposed. Okay. Adrian Smith. Opposed. Jerry Sweet. Opposed. Jess Anstey. Opposed. Brenda Gilchrist. Opposed. Mark Nelson. Opposed. Gordon McKenzie. Four. Lauren Parker. Opposed. Heather Findlay. Okay, Jill Barton wasn't on the call. Yeah. Opposed. Again, my apologies, Jill. I had you as absent. David Brent. Opposed. Tina Collins. Opposed. Terry Johnson. Opposed. Sue Ockenden. Okay. Uh, Wayne Burwash. In favor. Uh, Barb Blackwell. In favor. Gary Gafiliak. Opposed. Muriel Burnley was not on the call. And that was everybody. Okay. Uh, sorry, Kara Whittem just joined the call again. Kara? Kara, are you opposed or for? In favor? Okay. Oh, there's Kara. She just uh, her. her uh... Okay. The motion is not carried. Uh, Peggy. Yes. This is Kara. I have been disconnected twice. I heard probably in the last ten minutes one minute of sound, and I'm now going to make a statement. This is no way to run an AGM where important information is being discussed and we can't either connect, hear, or see one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I get yeah, this, I if I get disconnected one more time, I can be of no value to the people that put me there where voting is concerned. Thank you. Very well stated. Now, the motion is not carried. May I ask what motion it was? Certainly. It was to accept the financial statements. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So since the motion is not carried, we will um, we will go back to the discussion briefly of how much time do we think we need. It depends on the level of detail you're actually looking for. So it, with a reasonable amount of detail that you would like to have, I think we can have that by the third or the fourth. Uh, if you want to have an extreme amount of detail, then it will take quite a lot of time to forensically dig it out of the system. So what do you think is a reasonable amount of time and how much detail do you wish to have, please? Peggy, this is Tina. Um, I think a week is sufficient for us to, um, you know, discuss with our community and get some input and prepare questions for the board. Okay, that might not, that would, that then will take, if we take a week for you to go ask for questions, then there will be no decision made at the first board meeting. Gordon Peterson, do you have any thoughts on that? 
Well, I, I mean, obviously the idea was to have the, uh, the financials approved and the annual meeting completed before the new board takes effect. And in fact, it says that it takes effect at the conclusion of the annual meeting, right? So the, uh, that means you have options of do you defer the board meeting uh, to a later date um, and so that that allows and, and a later date would mean that you have to get essentially the 21 days in that you would have had anyway uh, and then if the uh, and then if the information is not available within that 21 day period you uh, you still will have to make a decision at that time um, so we can, we can do that you could defer the board meeting is, is one alternative okay how do you feel about that new board members Speaking uh, from my perspective, since I was going to miss the first board meeting, that would actually work better in my favor, and it also gives us the time to uh, read into the financials and other information as well. So I am actually uh, for uh, moving the board meeting a little further out. Well, the 21 days would be from Friday, correct? Perhaps Gord could answer, talk to this. I'm, I'm a bit confused about the 21 days. Is it 21 days from the time they receive the minutes and, or receive the statement? And then once they've received the statement, Gord, the motion is not to like it, but to either accept it or reject it. It's been rejected today. What happens after 21 days if it's still not accepted? What is the status then? Are we then, do we have to have another board election and re-elect another board or what happens at that point? Uh, no, but I mean, the, at that point in time, you would have this opportunity for people to discuss between now and then, right? And the, and the idea is that you would then try and get to the point where the, the financial statements are acceptable or there's legitimate reason why they are not acceptable. If the, if the members refuse to approve them just be, you know, arbitrarily, then you can always go to court and have that dealt through the court to require the members to do their duty. However, there's legitimate objections to what the information, either they don't have sufficient information or they, they have concerns about the information. At that point in time, you'd have to defer it until such time that you were able to provide the information to the satisfaction of the members, and then it would be approved. And again, the same thing is the way that you've done your elections, it may take effect upon the completion of the annual meeting, and until you get the approval of financial statements, your annual meeting remains open. Thanks, Mark. So, if we go to 21 days from last Friday, which is when you received the information, we're at Friday the 13th of October. I'm good for that weekend. Um, this is Dominic here. I'm sorry. I really, well, I had an issue. Um, are we still in the AGM? Yes, we are. And we're on the, we are. You're, you're in plenty of time. So we have deferred, I think, um, I need, I need direction from the members if we are to defer our board meeting for three weeks. So which date would that be, uh, please? October. Friday, October the 13th. That's a bad date. Uh, can you put me up to date, Peggy, please? What is going on? Uh, the, the members have elected to not approve the financial statements as presented and would like more time to review and ask questions, which is fair enough, and we're all happy with that. And as we were late when we issued them, uh, it's the issue is 31, meant to be 21 days. So if we defer the board meeting, so the members have their 21 days, then we would meet at the first meeting of the new board on Friday, the 13th of October. And, and why can't the first board uh, the first board meeting happens at 
the date that was discussed. This, this, was, uh, this was a discussion about the members don't are not prepared to approve the financial statements. Okay, but that, they don't need so to approve. Have, they need to accept. Go ahead, Doug. Okay. Say they, okay, the members I, need to accept the financial statement. The board needed to approve it. Just to just to pick nits here. Yeah, and the yeah. board okay, did. But the board did approve it. The board did approve the financial statement that was yes. done. Yes. And, and now the voting members do not ratify. Yes. Do not accept. Okay, but yeah. why is? Why, what's the reason for the board, the new board, not to meet on October 4th? Gord, could because you read the financial statements were not accepted? Yeah, just um, I'll let Gord repeat that, please. Yeah, I do want to. I do want to say one thing that Doug, you're you're entirely correct. Is that the requirement is submit is to submit the financial statements to the board. Uh, to sorry, is to submit the, the approved financial statement to the members. Board is the one that has the responsibility for approval. So in that sense, you're entirely correct. What the, what Equestrian Canada has done in the past, however, is they have required their members to ex to accept the financial statements in addition to them being submitted. So even though it's not required at law that they have to be accepted, that has been the approach that Equestrian Canada has taken in the past. Technically, the only requirement is to submit them, which they were submitted, but then you would have to wait the 21 days for that to go through because there's a requirement for them to be submitted within the, for, for a 21 day period in advance. You are also then outside the timeline. So in this case here, I think the, the appropriate thing to do is to, to make sure that the members are comfortable with the financial statements. And so what I was suggesting is you defer the board meeting to a time when the members have had an opportunity to consider the financial statements for the 21 day period. And I, and my understanding just to correct what you said, uh, Peggy, is that I, I was told that they'd gone out on the 21st. They would, so they were, and it's the time in response to your question, Doug, it's when you, when you sent them is 21 day right. period starts to run. Yeah. So I'd understood they went out on the 21st, but if that's not correct, if it was the 22nd, then you would be at the 13th. But if it's the 21st, the 12th would be the time that you would uh, you would have to have the uh, the next meeting, if you will, of the members to to get them to accept the financials. Thanks, Gord. Thank you, Gord. <clears throat> but I, I'm still you you can answer my question, Doug. Uh, Gord, uh, um, what what why should um, why should the board meeting be delayed? Because even if it's if this was presented by the old board, but it, I don't see the reason why it should be delayed. Because it's part of your I annual. I mean, I mean, life goes. It's part of your okay. annual meeting, and the new board takes effect upon conclusion of the annual meeting. So the idea is that you, and, and the reason being is you want the new board coming in to have a clean slate, that they've already got, everything's been done and now it's on to the next board. So the, and the way you've worded it in your, in your policies is that they take effect upon the conclusion of the annual meeting. So that's why we have to conclude the annual meeting before you have the board meeting. I see. Okay, so it's, it's I see. Okay, that answers my question. Thank you. So, what to do? Interesting. Interesting. Are we um, talking about board meeting on the 12th or the meeting, uh, the conclusion of the AGM on the 12th? I'm going to ask you again if you would accept what, I mean, minimal detail or reasonable detail can be prepared for you by next week and we can have the call as we originally suggested. Could, could we have uh, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, the 3rd or 4th of October? That's, that, that is when we would like to, to conclude this, yes. Then we have to, then we have, but, but it has to be, if you want to have a week, 
to go ask your committees what um, what they need to know, then then I don't see how we can possibly do that. So if you take a day to ask your committees or your two days, then Robert has an opportunity to to get together a reasonable amount of information. You'd like to speak to that, Robert? Uh, no, I think that's that's accurate. Well, the fourth would give us ten days. We'd we'll be happy Peggy. to do that. Peggy. Yes. Peggy. This is Cara. Uh, perhaps you should ask the category members if they are all available for that date. Nope. Um, I can ask. Certainly, we'll we'll ask. Um, we'll do another roll call as to your availability, and then I think we have again. We must be reasonable and perhaps go with a majority because we're never going to keep three by people to agree. Do you have your paper for the roll call? <laughs> what is the date that you're talking about here now? The fourth of October. Okay. Robert, is it sufficient time to provide each? Uh, the, the question is, if, if everybody here who dissented or who, who disagreed with approving the statement or accepting the statements, my apologies, um, has sufficient time to check with whatever um, department, committee, um, person that they have contact with, who they are um, working on behalf of, who they are, are covering the interest of, um, to find out if those people have received enough information from my side, and if they haven't, what they still need. So if you can all agree to do that in an appropriate amount of time, and I'm thinking 48 hours or less, um, and then come back to me understanding that I'm one person, um, I can give my absolute best effort to have everything ready for everybody by the 4th. Um, uh, if it will take longer than 45, uh, 48 hours, for everybody to speak with their committees and with their um, constituents, whoever whoever needs the detail to give you the go ahead. To the um, if it will take longer than 48 hours, then I will need to know that sooner rather than later so that we can delay this even further. Uh, Robert, uh, this is Cara again. That is Robert I'm talking to, am I? It is, yes. Sorry, Cara. Yeah, that's okay. Um, that last statement that you made is a very valid one. Um, I know from my point of view, uh, if I have to go back to the dressage committee, I cannot guarantee that I will get a reply within 48 hours. <coughs> I don't well, know how, about the rest of them. How far out can, if we move it back from the fourth, how, can, how far can we move it? Can we? Uh, how, how many days or is everyone comfortable moving it back there? Um, we can move it. We have to meet within two months of night. But it, it is actually harmful to the Federation to postpone this for very long. So I would like you to seriously consider exactly what information you require so that we can have a new beginning with the finances, which is exactly what we're attempting to do. There have been at least four uh, different financial officers working on this over the past year, and, and it's, it's not a very pleasant situation to be in for anyone. This is Jerry Sweet again. Um, You've asked if we can get in, if we can get back to our clients, as it were, um, within 48 hours. Um, on behalf of the provinces group, I would certainly be prepared to take on the task, along with my other colleagues, of getting in touch with all of our the various provinces. And I think also having put ourselves in a position, I said that I did. Uh, um, approve of this, so I'm one of those that was in dissension. I think we now have to be prepared to do our part to get this moving as quickly as possible. And if what we're being asked for is to get that information within a period of 48 hours, I think it behooves us to do that. 
Uh, Mike, I'm just wondering for jumping, um, because our discipline manager is in Spain until next week for the Nations Cup final. Just wondering, is that going to present a problem with communicating within the office so the jumping committee can have information within 48 hours? I thought you were. Um, I, I don't think. <laughs> I can provide, I start again. During the audit, as, as Kirsten uh, Giles, our auditor, can attest to, I spend a full two and a half days with Karen going over line by line every revenue and expense item that had been spent in the whole year. Um, and I don't mean DL code line items, I mean actually every invoice and every line of revenue that came in, we went through them one by one and judged them for their appropriateness and whether they were actually jump related expenses. Um, the issue on jump side is currently that there's there's no easy to to disseminate report that I would be able to provide. So I know what jump requires. Um, I would be able to put that together without Karen's um, input and assistance at this stage. But I would also send it to her to to check over before it goes to the committee. So I don't think Karen being out of the country would would harm that process at all. And I think we would be able to to deal with that um, fairly easily. Okay, great. I, I still find it dubious given that now that Mike brings it up, she's out of the country to do uh, 48 hours. I think it is difficult. Well, 48 hours isn't for me to get the information back to you. 48 hours is for you to, to contact your uh, staff or, or committee member who you'll be voting on their behalf. Um, so if, if you're able to do that and I can be in touch with Karen, I have her on WhatsApp and, and she's actually been texting me from the plane tonight. Um, I am sure we can make this happen so that, that you can be in touch with your staff and committee members in due time in 48 hours, uh, knowing that, that the effort required on our, our behalf after that information comes back to us to get this information back to you is going to be quite intense. Um, if you if you all will commit to that, I will commit to uh, to spending the time uh, and, and giving up on the sleep that this will require to get this done. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Peggy, can and, uh, I? Uh, uh, yes, sorry. who? Uh, Craig? Thank you. Oh, actually, this is, uh, this is Peter Gray. I'm, I apologize, but I missed call, um, the, the roll call. And certainly for eventing, I'll make the, uh, the attempt to make sure all of our members are uh, informed and get some feedback for this committee. Thank you. Peggy, Elizabeth Para. Yes, Elizabeth. I would just like to ask Robert where the information is going um, because uh, Para does not have a discipline manager. Uh, for Para, I will be working in conjunction with both John and Jamie Ann. Thank you. You're welcome. Peggy. Yes. It's Craig. Um, yes. Just reviewing the, the current financial statements that are before us, um, it seems to me that there are uh, a few disciplines um, that were involved in this that have significant um, changes. And it sounds like those are the ones that are probably in the biggest need of um, receiving more detail. Uh, we've already had a discussion about requiring meds and, um, and jump. And I, in just looking at the changes that are there, uh, could we prioritize this and maybe get the job slightly easier? Absolutely. Would that be helpful? Yes, it would. I suspect then it would be up to the other groups if they're reasonably satisfied um, with the statements as presented. Obviously, the provinces have made a comment, Jumps made a comment, um, and I don't know about the others, but um, some obviously are fairly dramatic in their changes in the statements, and others are not so much. And, and it will be difficult to prioritize until we know exactly what you're looking for. Um, but if you can get, as I think that you mostly do have an idea of what various groups are looking for. So if you can get that to us as quickly as possible, then uh, we will not go down. Yeah, I, I think I think what I'm trying to say is, is it's obvious that Jump uh, had a reduction in their restricted fund of some $255,000, which may or may not, most likely was uh, intended expenses. 
but there's no detail on what those expenses went to that has been provided to the Trump committee at this stage of the game. So the, the simple question is, is okay, 255 maybe is, is the number, obviously an audited number, but the Trump committee itself is probably saying, okay, exactly how did we spend that much money? I will have a conversation with Pam tomorrow, if you'd like, and relay that information back to Robert. Thank you. Anybody else? I, 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 sorry, I think you should summarize very clearly, step by step, what the next procedures are going to be to make sure everybody's actually on the same wavelength. Um, you're sending us the information, and we're getting the information back to you, and then we need to go for approval. Just lay it out in, in step by step. So the, the first step is that anybody who still has concern about the financial statements and the lack of information we have provided to date um, should be in touch with um, your disciplines or your provinces or whatever whoever it is that you represent. Um, right. If you if you have um, you're opposing the the statement approval or acceptance. Um, you would your first step will be going to the the discipline province or or people that you represent and getting them um, to let you know whether they have have received the information so far that makes them comfortable with what has gone on uh, revenue and expenses in their category through the year. If they are not, what they need to to move forward. Um, they should then each be in touch with me directly within 48 hours to let me know what their needs are. So if it's eventing, um, the eventing committee should should work with Fleur and myself for the next few days um, to find a way to present to them the information they need to give you the approval to give the, the go ahead to vote for uh, the acceptance. Okay. okay, so does that make sense? Is that clear? Yep. Thank you. This is Gord here. I have a question. A lot of information has come forward since uh, we've uh, made the motion and, and, and not accepted it. I have one question. We're talking about uh, audited statements here. So if there's some major or any changes to those statements, do they have to go back to the auditors to sign off on them? Or do we really realize what we're doing here? Or is it just we're more concerned about the operational side rather than the, the uh, audited statement side? My understanding is that we are more interested in the operational side. I personally, and unless I'm directed by a lot of board members and voting members, would have absolutely no intention of going back to the open. This is Doug. I'll just make a comment. Thanks, Gord. That, that was the point I was trying to make, and you made it much more eloquently. Um, I have no objection to us investing in getting the best information absolutely possible to all of our stakeholders. But if, if the members choose at some point to not accept the audited financial statement, uh, that's a different question, I think. So thanks very much, Gord. I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, this is Wayne. That, that's my point is if, the, if we're going to send them back or we aren't planning to send them back to the auditor, any details, then why don't we accept these financials, which is our mm -hmm. duty to either accept, accept or reject. But um, okay. if we aren't going to have changes to it, why can't we accept it and just get the details, uh, like the original motion that Gordon and I made? So this is Rob speaking again. I. <laughs> I personally like that idea, um, and, but at the same time, I am not, uh, I've said to a number of people through this entire process that it's my intention to provide clear, accurate information to anybody who requires it as part of their volunteering, as part of their, their work with Equestrian Canada. Um, if we were to go ahead, uh, playing devil's advocate here, uh, with acceptance of the financial statements this evening, um, it is, I, I still have time on the books in the next week to spend with Fleur and go through the eventing budget. I still intend to go through uh, with everybody to ensure that people are aware of what happened last year. Um, people who, uh, who require detail uh, to continue planning, to budget, to figure out what happened in the prior year, um, have that ability to do so. Um, and on top of that, anything that we do right now, um, 
anytime anything that we do right now to delay that further delays any monthly statements that are coming out. Um, if we decide that we're going to spend the next two to three weeks figuring out what happened last year um, intensively, then then that will further delay my ability to go through the monthly statements with my staff and get that out for everybody, um, which is was also one of our main Thank things you. we would like to do. Um, and Rob, uh, this is Kirsten. May I interject for just a few moments, if I may, to speak to the membership? Um, <clears throat> the way we audited actually was not based on the departmental reporting we're seeing on the financial statements. It was actually by more government funding versus membership fees versus, you know, rent expenses versus salary expenses. So if I can provide any more information from an audit perspective on what we actually were looking at per uh, those categories, because as I think someone has said, the numbers are what they are. Um, as far as total revenues, total expenses go, cash goes, uh, liabilities go. Um, and there is the possibility as well, if we do take the time to go through the details for each department and there are changes required, we can also pick this up in the next year by doing what we call a comparative uh, change or disclosure to say that, you know, we had reviewed these departmental reporting subsequent to year end and have decided that changes were required. Okay, did everybody get that? Yes. Yes. Very much. Okay. Um, I guess at this point we need to decide what the will of the members is, um, whether there is any desire to move forward with the acceptance of the statements, considering all of the new facts since this discussion started. Um, if if you are um, willing to, to move forward and accept the financial statements, I will commit to you to work with each of your disciplines and the provinces as we go forward uh, to find out and to, uh, detail what happened in financial year 2016-17. Um, I don't intend to let that drop. I don't intend to uh, to leave everybody in the dark. And going forward, I'd like to make sure that we have a system that we can rely on. Um, and uh, and so if everybody can. Uh, suspend disbelief in my my desire to do that. Um, I, I think it would make a lot of sense, not only um, for this meeting, but as we look to the cost of, of moving a board meeting that's already been set. Um, you know, I am trying to make sure that fiscally we are making wise decisions, and part of that is is not spending uh, hundreds or perhaps thousands of dollars on moving a, a board meeting that's already been set and booked. Um, I do understand the delicacy surrounding the 21 days that we did not get to give everybody, and, and for that I am supremely sorry, um, but uh, but we really are uh, giving it our best attempt to try and make sure that this is, uh, that we're building a system that you can trust in going forward. And I, I know I've got no right to ask everybody for their trust at this point, but I, I would like to ask for it regardless. Bob, we appreciate, uh, I appreciate what you've said, but I would also say that I do not think I could I can go back to my discipline uh, and uh, on their behalf approve a financial statement given the lack of detail that was included in them and they are given the numbers involved that they would like more detail as to how we got to those numbers and I don't think that's an unreasonable request. So I, I think I can so I, I'm just going to reiterate that they have already been approved. The members accept or they don't accept. Okay, I'll use the and, word. and that the, I, I, I will continue with what Rob said, is that he will give you the detail that you want and require. But it won't change numbers in the financial report. So perhaps you could reconsider accepting it. If we did move to the, we still retain the October 4th or October 3rd date um, and work within that timeline, there wouldn't be any additional cost. It would just be a matter of the members calling in at that time to, to vote. Is that correct? That's correct. And that would allow us the 48 hours to speak with our disciplines and there'd be no additional cost to the Federation. That's correct. That's correct. It, it just the timeline for actually responding to any requests if they did come up from your 
your committees, your disciplines, the provinces uh, would be much more uh, constricted. Because you can't go yeah. line by Yeah. And the, the issue is the quicker you want it, the less detailed I can be. Because uh, I, I am working to get this level of detail across the entire organization, not just one discipline. Um, and so, I, yeah. question, question, Rob. I, I think I've heard you say a couple of times that you, for JUMP particularly, you and Karen have gone through line by line. So I assume that information is somewhere and Karen has it uh, on behalf of the JUMP committee? Uh, so what we did was Karen identified a number of items that needed to be changed and I changed them before the audit was complete. Um, there were some uh, some items that could not be changed, but Karen was aware of them and, and the, the amount was uh, was insignificant enough that it would not reflect on, on changes that would be made in this. Um, and then so far as what information Karen currently has, um, I have a, a file on my computer where we had gone through the line by line. She she doesn't have it, but she could have access to it very easily. Thanks, Rob. Um, this is Mark from on, Ontario. Um, it sounds like everybody needs a bit of time. Why don't we just go ahead with the 21 days that are supposed to be given to us? Um, yes. Furthermore, the 4th of October is a OEF board meeting, so that complicates uh, my situation in, in particular. So uh, I would support uh, or think that, that let, let, let's just do what we're supposed to do. Give it the 21 days and then let's move forward after, after that. Um, as well, Thank I you. do have a question. Considerable. Right. That's okay. Um, Go on. Mark? So, just a point of clarification. I don't understand. Um, the, if, if the audit, um, KPNC did, did not uh, audit the restricted funds, what, what does that mean and, and what are we uh, talking about? KPMG did audit the restricted funds. They audited from a an organizational level, not from a um, departmental restricted fund balance uh, method. So they, did, they didn't go through each department as a silo. They went through the organization as a whole and chose um, expenses, revenues, uh, receivables, uh, payables, all of the all of the different categories that could be picked organization um, without specific focus on a single discipline or, or the disciplines as silos. Yes, and to add to that, we did audit total revenues and total expenses. We didn't actually pick between departments. We looked at every expense that, that could be um, selected, and we did check to see that it was actually applicable to that department or discipline. So that is part of our testing that we did. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Maybe, Gord, if you want to... Uh, give some input on how we proceed from here. It seems that we're split across the membership. Some agree, some don't. Some would like the fourth, some would like 21 days. Uh, from a governance legal standpoint, where do we go from here? Uh, I'd, I'd like to just get this part of the discussion wrapped up. I, I guess what you have is you have your alternatives as to whether or not someone wants to make a motion to, to change. I mean, you had a motion that was defeated uh, and and you now have a suggestion, but you, you need to have someone make a motion and, and vote on it. So if, you know, Mark wanted to put forward the motion of 21 days and got a seconder, and then that could be one of the things considered as, a, as an alternative. And uh, if that's uh, passed, then you, you've got 21 days. If that's defeated, then you've got uh, an, another alternative being put forward. The motion has come after the decision was wrong. All right, so I'm happy to uh, make the motion. Go, Mark. All right, I'm, this is Mark. I'm, I'm happy to make the motion to defer to the 21 days. Uh, this is Adrian. I will second that. All right. I think we've any more discussion. Could you read the motion again? Could you repeat your motion, Mark, please? Uh, the motion is to defer the financial statements uh, to the 21 days that uh, was required initially or from the pilot. Thank you. 
Uh, it's from the not for profit act. So I think the motion should be right. to defer the acceptance of the financial statements by the so membership. Consideration, consideration, because it's not really acceptance, right? I mean, consideration, I mean, consideration by the mem membership. Thank you, Lord. Passed from the uh, the date of submission. So that, and I think we should actually put in the date. I, I believe it's October twelfth, so that there's clarity in terms of uh, to release the October twelfth. Okay. Okay, so the motion, Mark, then, if you agree, is to, to defer the uh, consideration by the membership of the audited financial statements until the 12th of October, at which point we will have fulfilled the 21-day um, requirement by the Not-for-Profit Act. Very good. Agreed. Okay. And Adrian and Seconder, you, you were comfortable yes, with Yes, I agree with that. Yes. We'll take a roll call. Do we, do we have a roll call? Well, we have to vote again. How do we keep track okay. of it? Is there any discussion on the motion or no. regarding sure. the cost? We've had the discussion, cost haven't we? Yep. This is Chris Sorensen. If I could interject something. Please. Please do. I think that we need to balance a lot of things here. I think it's very fair that people want to have more time to look at the financials. That's completely understandable. But I think that the organization has a lot of uh, priorities to get to. And I think the most reasonable thing would be to give a little bit of extra time, but keep the board meeting, in order to save the uh, Federation money of changing the board meeting and to get all of the other things on the agenda up and rolling. So I, I would suggest that there's a compromise of extra time without the expense of change in the board meeting, allowing people to get those extra details without slowing down the progress on everything else that needs to start to get rolling in the Federation. Sorry. Thank you for that. Are there any other comments? Well, I'm I'm um, two week eco uh, Chris uh, comments. That's pretty much what I was wondering about. But I understood that it was not possible to uh, give the time required to the voting members to verify the financial statements and still keep the um, meeting for the new board at the same date, right? That's correct. It's not possible to do both. So if, if we yes. take a roll call on the motion that is set before us that's been seconded um, to defer until the 12th, then we would also be deferring the board meeting. Thank you. Include the flights are purchased. Yeah, for, for which flights are already purchased, I, I will add. I think the main point is that we should have had those statements 21 days in advance, period. You're absolutely correct. Totally agree. Thank you. But uh, this is Gord here speaking, um, and you, you are correct, but the reality of it is it's going to cost the organization a lot of money if this is going to be approved okay. just for a few people to prove a point, is what appears to me. And the air audited statements, we're not going to change them. Uh, I think uh, we need to get on and accept these uh, statements and uh, with the proviso that the concerned people are going to get the detail they need in the future and not hold up the organization. So I think it's a bad motion. Excuse me, don't we have a motion on the floor? Don't we have to vote? Yes, we do. The motion. Okay, well, let's, uh, I will table further discussion for now if we can vote on this. <clears throat> so the motion as it stands is uh, actually Peggy should probably as the chair read the motion out and then we will take a vote to defer the financial statement to 21 days in order to be in compliance with the not-for-profit act okay so I will start with category a members Peter Gray. Can I suggest that you, excuse me, 
point of order, would you not first ask if there are any opposed? And if there aren't, you don't need to go through that. Well, certainly, as long as when you are opposed, just you state your name, please. Okay. Is anybody opposed to the motion? Uh, this is Peter from Assenting. I. I hate to be silly, but I, I would like to be making sure I'm voting correctly. I totally agree with Chris Sorensen. We have a board that wants to get going with this federation and make some changes. If we vote for this, are we also changing the date of the board meeting? Yes, we are. Okay, well, I'm opposed then. I beg your pardon, you're opposed? Yeah. Thank you. Gordon McKenzie, I'm opposed. Wayne Burwash, I'm opposed. David Brent, I'm opposed. Terry O'Brannon, I'm opposed. Carl Whitsum, I'm opposed. Mike Lawrence, I oppose. Same reason. It's Elizabeth Quigg, and I agree. Okay. Miller, I agree. Okay. So we have seven opposed and two in favor. Uh, Are we not doing favor? a roll call? I understood that we were just kept counting the opposed. I think you better do a roll call. Yes, that okay. was the that original was plan. <laughs> Fine. Okay. Roll call on the motion. Please table any further discussion until the end of the roll call. Category A members, Peter Gray. Opposed. Michelle LaPierre. Not on the call. Mike Lawrence. Opposed. Terrence Miller. Approved. Ray Paul. Not on. Not on the call. Terry O'Brennan? Opposed. Charlene Kostecki? Not on the call. Elizabeth Quigg? Agreed. Kara Whitten? Opposed. Category B, Nicole DuPlessis? Opposed. Adrian Smith? Agreed. Jerry Sweet. Jerry, are you still on the call? Jess Anstey. Sorry, Jess, I couldn't hear you. Okay, no reply. Brenda Gilchrist. I agree. Mark Nelson. Agree. Gordon McKenzie. Uh, opposed. Lauren Parker. Agreed. Heather Findlay. Heather, are you still on the call? Okay, not on the call. Category C members, Jill Barton. Agree. Heather, agree. Jill Barton, agree. Agree. David Brent. Agreed. Opposed. Tina Collins. Agreed. Terry Johnson. Agreed. Sue Ockenden. Opposed. Wayne Burwash. Opposed. Barb Blackwell. Opposed. Gary. Agreed. Muriel Burnley. Not on the call. Okay. I've got 10 opposed. Need 11. I've got 11 in favor. Yikes. 
um, Peggy. Yes. Uh, Cara again. Uh, some of the people that were called on the roll call for this vote were on the call. What has happened to them? This is Jerry, and I'm sorry, I've just been away from the phone. Um, I would agree. Okay, so that's 12 in agreement and 10 opposed. My apologies. Someone else was speaking? Now we've had two votes on. I asked. I asked a question. I'd like an answer. Well, I I know no more than you about the people who were on who didn't respond because I'm in the same situation as you, <laughs> listening and not not knowing. Um, so, so the question begs: uh, How are we going to deal with this voting procedure? If suddenly people are not present and we do not know why they are not, and yet they were present five minutes before. Well, if they don't speak, their vote doesn't count, does it? No, that's not, um, I'll that's not, what, I, that's not what I think is a concern. It's like what happened to me twice and three times the microphone went dull or dead. Uh, I could see that the meeting was live, all the bubbles bouncing around the screen, and yet there was no sound. And Except this is we, what we, can't, we can't guarantee that that's the case for everybody, though, as Gary Sweet was away from the phone when the vote was taken. I, I'm well aware of that, Robert. I heard that. But I'm trying to support the individuals who, at this point, haven't had an opportunity to voice their vote on a changed motion. Was anybody not on the call during the roll call vote? Michelle was on the call at one point. <clears throat> was on the phone and able to vote and had their vote in. And the rest were never on the call. There was one individual, Michelle. He must have got cut off or something happened because he wouldn't go off the line otherwise. But it would not have made a difference in the call given the fact you had 22 voting and, and it's 12-10 as I got there, 12-9, 21 voting, 12-9, is that what you had, Rob? Uh, I had 12-10, George. I Canada is monitoring this with Canada. Is monitoring because they're writing up as well. Whoever that is, could you get closer to your phone? Uh, I think I think we need to move on here. So obviously this motion has passed. We will defer for 21 days. And that's the way it'll be. I, uh, I intend to honor any commitment that I've made in this call so far, and if you can all do the same, and please respond within 48 hours that you have contacted your committees and your provinces and constituents, and that they will be in touch with me about getting further details to them. That would be appreciated. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and thank you. You're very welcome. Um, to that end, I will repeat again that there it never has and it likely still won't go line by line. Uh, appointment of auditors. Just before we move on, could we confirm this meeting then? So we as the members are having a meeting at 7 Eastern on October 12th. Is that correct? Um, I don't think I, we hadn't selected a time, but if you'd like it to be seven, that's fine. We'll it. it was October 12th, though, correct? Yeah, that, that's what was suggested. Yeah. I was off a day. This is Sue Ockenden. Michelle Lapierre is on the line, but he can't speak, so I, I just called him on his cell phone. Can he email or text? He, the second button from the left on the top screen. So there's a microphone. Can you I can't hear him. Can, could you speak up there? Are you on the cell phone now? Can you hear him? 
speak up? Yeah, I do. Can you yes. hear him on your side now? Yes, yes, we can. He's on my cell phone talking to you through the phone. He can see you there, but he can't yes. speak. So tell him how to make it work on his computer or whatever have you. By the way, I disagree with the motion. Thank you. That makes it 11 to 12. Huh? huh? Michelle opposed the motion, which makes That's it 11 not. to 12. Correct? I think that needs checking. I've been checking them off, and that was it was 11 to 12. It was um, 11 to 12 before. So it was. What do you do? I believe it. I have 10 12 before Michelle's vote. Did, did I hear correctly? No, I guess I heard Michelle say he agreed. He, I thought he I heard he agreed too. Oh, I thought I heard him say he, he didn't agree. agree. He disagreed. Oh, he disagreed. You know what? If, if Michelle still is logged in on the computer, but we just can't hear him. If he can press the chat bubble button, which is the second from the left at the top of his screen, he should be able to chat with the group on his keyboard and put in what his vote would be without any score. We should be able to see that. Why will you call him back and call in numbers? All right, Gord, is this a simple who has more votes? Does it matter for one vote closer in one direction? Is this one vote going to back the other way? It doesn't make a difference, I would say, which I thought it didn't. I thought it was 12 10, and then whether he agreed or disagreed, it was either going to be 12 11 or 13 10. But someone said that they had a different count. I would not consider mine to be an official count. I'm just checking them off. Yep. The official count comes from there. The chair should have the official count. Shall I call off the names of the opposed? And if anybody I miss, please let me know. Can I, I, I would just like to make a comment, and I'm sorry, but I really am uncomfortable with this whole idea of voting orally. Yep. That again goes against everything, everything that fits into a democratic system says that your vote does not necessarily have to be made to everyone. And, and I think putting a lot of stress on people to make a decision, all of this voting should be done in some form so that I have no idea how Cara, I, I might have a good idea from what she says, but I don't know when it comes to push to shove who, how she's voting or how anybody else is voting. And none of us should be able to know that. I don't know that this is an entirely entirely democratic system, though, because we're all representing people who are listening on our Facebook Live chat. Well, the, the, the 90,000 who we keep talking about wanting to include will all want to know how we voted and, and how um, they're being represented. This is the reason why we did it this way and, and why we had an open and visible process. If you're uncomfortable with voting this way, I think there should be discussion on that maybe for next time. Maybe I'm speaking out of turn and I apologize for but, well, there uh, needs, to be, there needs uh, to be considerable more discussion than that. Cara has already brought up the fact about the way this, that we're running the meeting anyway. I have made that comment on email previously, but we can't change it for this year, obviously. So can can we move on with this meeting, please? Yes, please. I, I, and it, I hear you, and I think that we'll do everything we can to avoid having this situation again. Thank you, David. Are there any... Uh, complaints about that statement. So, regardless of Michelle's vote, we still have Michelle? Michelle? Yes. Yeah. No, okay. I think we need to um, accept that this motion. And therefore, we'll move on to the appointment of the 
I think that's Doug. Doug, are you up for the appointment of auditors? Sure, I can if somebody will mute their feedback. We have someone else now back on the computer. Um, Hang on one second, Doug. Thank you. Thank you. Only the host can talk now. Yay. Am I good to go now, Rob? You are good to go now, Doug. Thank you, sir. Um, yes, with regard to the appointment of auditors, uh, for, for reasons uh, which, which I'll explain, we decided again this year uh, to, um, and, and the, uh, the members ratified this at mid-year, we decided because of the difficulties we were having with uh, both changes in, in um, software systems and also the uh, unanticipated changes we had in personnel over the course of the year, that it would be a foolish time to bring in a new auditor um, as had been previously suggested but was rescinded by the membership. Uh, and therefore, we uh, brought KPMG in again. I would like to recommend to the members and would appreciate if someone would make a motion to this effect. Um, I would like to recommend to the members that we retain KPMG uh, for the audit uh, for 27. 2018. Um, they're now very familiar with our system, um, have done an admirable job of uh, dealing with our, uh, our, the problems this year and helping position us very well for the upcoming year. Um, I commend KPMG and Kirsten particularly for that. And so I would appreciate if someone would make a motion to point KPMG as the auditor for 2017-2018. Thanks, Rob. Everyone can talk now. Now. Very sweet, sir. Very sweet, sir. Thank you, Jerry. Jerry McKenzie, second. Jerry McKenzie, second. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any discussion? Any discussion? Then I'll declare uh, any opposed. Uh, any opposed? I'll declare the motion I'll carried. Declare the motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us to our that other business, our other business as specified in the meeting. Um, I'm sorry to be going again, but every time that they mute the people on the call so that the chat can speak, we don't hear anything. Okay. Kara Wooden, can you mute your microphone for me, please? Echo? 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 I beg your pardon? What do you want me to do? If you can, I believe, because I can I see it, I can that is uh, a uh, shadow around it, which means audio is coming, coming from you. I cannot hear what you are saying. Sorry, Robert. No, no, that's okay. No, no that's okay. <laughs> I, can somebody who has contact with Karen directly contact her and ask her to dial her and ask her to dial her audio? Why? Because she's the one who's currently she's the one that's that is causing the echo. Causing the echo. But I don't have any phone on. I just have my computer. If you can, you hear me now? Okay. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay, at the top of your screen, at the there's top of your screen, five buttons. I know how to do it all, Robert, but I still don't understand why I am creating feedback. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly why you're not speaking, so that you're not speaking. Why? 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 Way. If you can mute your microphone for us while you're not speaking, while you're not everybody will be able to hear us. Everybody will hear us. Okay, can everybody still hear? Yes. Okay, and the no. echo is gone? No. No. I can't no. hear an echo anymore myself. No. Keep playing and we'll see how it is. 
Well, we have to try to get through this. Yeah. The motion to remove the word officer from Article 4, Item 4.25, Independence of the Bylaws. Be it resolved that the amendment to the bylaws approved by the Board of Directors on August 21st, 2017, amending Section 4.25 to remove the word officer in two places as set out below. He and is hereby sanctioned, ratified, and approved. And uh, because of the feedback, I'll leave it to you to read it. And I'd like a motion and a second. Dave Brent. Yes, Brent. Yes, Brent. Shut up, yeah. Oh, and Pierre. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So Brent moved and Michelle has seconded. Is there a discussion? Peggy, you've got the feedback. It's Liz. Yes, I know I do. Yes, I know I do. Is there no discussion on this? Bylaw? Is there anyone opposed to this bylaw? Can you all hear me? Can you all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay, yep. then this bylaw is carried. Uh, it's Carrie Johnson call speaking. Um, just a point of order. The bylaws pay 30 days in advance, and I don't care. It's just a point of order. I, I can't understand. I can't understand. Just changes to the bylaws are to pay 30 days in advance from any uh, issue to the chief bylaws. Is that not correct? Or would you answer this question for us? I'll have to go get my bylaws and read it again. I mean, I really don't want to change it. I just, it's just a point of order, that's all. Okay, would, but we voted on it and you, you're raising the point of order after. So I will certainly double check it, but I believe that we have passed this bylaw, correct? Yeah. Thank you. So now this brings us to the questions that we asked the categories to send in. We have received two questions from uh, category B and two questions from category C, at which point I turn this over to Liz from Governance. Liz, are you there? Robert, can you, um, I don't know, do something so we don't have the echo? No. When I, when I try to mute everybody, for some reason, the audio cuts out for everybody on the other end and nobody can hear anything. So I think for now, we'll just have to try and match your cadence with the echo and, and have it just finish out. So we had um, two questions from category B, two questions from category C. Uh, question one from category B was confirm the employment status of e the CEO Eva Habaris. Um, well, that's been done. Employed or de departing soon. Well, a, uh, a um, communication was sent out this morning concerning Eva, uh, who has resigned as of the 28th of this month. Yes, there was a second part to that question. Um, I can't answer to the second part. Lisa, Lisa Lazarus on the call. Yes, I'm here. Lisa, could you take this question, please? Can you, can you cut out for a second for me? Can you repeat the question? Yes, there was a okay. second. 
you hear me, Lisa? I can hear you faintly. Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Uh, it follows as, um, hang on, let's find out where it goes. To what do you attribute to the fact that EC CEOs have been replaced at such a frequency and what changes do you plan to put into place to reverse this trend of repeated dismissal departures? Um, okay, well, I certainly can't speak to, um, you know, previous CEOs prior to EVA. Um, uh, what, what we can say about EVA is that, um, you know, in the, in the board's view, EC was in a very different place when she was appointed as CEO about three and a half years ago. And um, the, the goals and the particular needs of EC at that time suited her skill sets and um, her objectives well. And in the board, she accomplished um, quite a bit for, for EC during that period of time. Uh, but after, given that all of the bylaws were passed and we are now in the process of implementation, um, that she felt and the board agreed that she was not the right person um, to implement those changes moving forward. And I think, um, obviously, these are important lessons, and, and the new board will have to look very closely at the lessons we've learned from, from the parts of the previous CEO. It's a very, it's a very, very complex organization, um, and finding the right CEO requires the matching of a number of different skill sets. And and those just really, I mean, really, we have to study those, uh, I think, and, and go through a very careful, careful process. But um, it doesn't mean that uh, Eva's period of being CEO was not a productive one. Uh, the current board thinks it was. It's just that going forward, uh, we need we need a different a different type of leader. That's all I would say. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. So moving on to uh, category B, question two. We understand in reading the general regs that the EC board is responsible for approving certain fees. If the following fees are approved by the EC board, we ask that the following modifications be seriously considered for 2018. Uh, I believe Doug is going to answer to this one. Hey, would you say that again, Liz? I'm, I'm still trying to determine how we jumped over the EC nominating committee report and the introduction of board members. Yes. <laughs> Which was your question again, Liz? Okay, it was the one about the uh, scheduling of fees. Oh, yes, I can talk to that quickly, and then I hope we'll get back onto the agenda. Um, yes, we, we, we're certainly engaging in, in that discussion. We do have on the table and have been trying to get accomplished, but as people understand, uh, keep getting derailed by other exigent issues. We have on the table, um, in, con in, in concert with uh, all of our stakeholders, particularly um, our, our provincial territorial uh, sports organization, collaboration with them, we uh, desperately want to uh, continue to work on uh, redesigning and restructuring the uh, entire competition strategy and competition program. We're attempting to engage in conversation with those folks and have had some very, very uh, profitable um, initial conversations with them. Uh, however, other issues seem to keep derailing those con those conversations. But absolutely, uh, those those issues are are on our table, and we would wish to keep pursuing them. And uh, we appreciate those comments incredibly. We think that's a great suggestion, and I'm hoping we can get uh, those working groups back to work on those kind of things that we need to move forward with. Uh, this is Adrian from uh, it's Adrian from Category B. Can I just ask that the full question be read for those who are listening in, so that they will understand the two segments that we had totally asked about, about the late fees and the sport license fees? So the sport license yeah, can... applied for the first. Sport license late fee. Oh, go ahead, Peggy applied for the first time or when a person was not a holder of a sport license the previous year be abolished and that the level of sport license required for coaches be as follows instructor bronze competition coach silver coach specialist or level two gold hp coach or level three platinum 
Thank you. you. Thank you for reading that. Um, Sorry about that, Adrian. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah, and I'll just reiterate that I, I think those are excellent suggestions, and we're really hoping to move forward with, with, with that kind of restructuring, which I think is exactly um, what, what we have in, in, in mind, and we want to work with the provinces to, to keep working towards those, those kind of goals. So I appreciate that, Adrian. Okay, thank you. Uh, my absolute apologies for skipping to the second page. Um, it's only in bold where it says EC nominating committee report. Uh, and uh, Dominique, I'll turn that over to you. Yes. <clears throat> um. Well, I guess you've all seen the report. Um, I think that um, the system that we're using, I think it, it's a very uh, interesting system. It, it, um, it, it provides us with the um, possibility of uh, ranking all candidates, but which which is not agreed by everyone, but at the end, uh, the voting is is um, is really only for the number of candidates that need to be uh, elected. So I think I think the, that the system is really fair and democratical. Um, I haven't seen any issue with it. I've been uh, quite surprised. By the the way um, the voting went, considering each category, I put a note in there. Um, I'm I'm just stating that uh, the voting members are representing categories, and it's surprising to see how um, the voting is is doesn't have any trend for categories, anything that would seem like a trend. So um, what we need as an organization um, to recognize that we have more work to do that way. The voting members need to be representing their category and should be voting um, the same way or almost. Um, so that, that was quite surprising. Um, I was very comfortable with um, putting out the points for every um, candidate. I think it was um, a need to do so, even if, um, if it wasn't um, appreciated by everyone. But uh, we live in a democracy. I think it's um, it's quite important to, just to know the results of an election, and it's part of it. The points are part of it. Um, you've all seen the results. I don't think that I need to go in there, especially at this time. So, um, if there's any questions, I will be happy to answer. So are there any questions for Dominique? I have a general question. When don't I? That's Jerry. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yes, Jerry Sweet. Um, I, it, this doesn't need to be answered right now, but are all the voting members satisfied with this system, both of the way in which the nominations are done, the way in which the the nominating committee works through the list of potential candidates and indeed the way in which the voting system occurs. I'm not asking for answers right now. That's much too big a question. Uh, I, I'm, I, it's, it's a very interesting question because we are in a democracy, I think we, we, we can ask ourselves uh, if we're happy with the system or not. 
All I can say is that um, I've been I've been a candidate last year in 2016, and now I was on the other side being president of elections. And personally, I think I think the system is very. Good. I think that uh, we don't have any reason to change anything in it. Um, but we. I, I was at the chance to be um, looking at all the ballots, looking at the whole system, and I, and now you know I I I can tell you because I know it inside out, and and I think I think it's really good. I, I'm sorry that I was not able to answer the um, the. Um, Questioning that was before the, the voting, when when a lot of people said, you know, why we why do we have to rank eleven when we are only uh, are looking for uh, eight? And the answer is quite easy: only to valid validate the ballots. That's all. I mean, the the actually you are voting for eight candidates and the three remaining candidates don't get any points. So it's really working well. Yeah. Any, any further questions? If not, I'll thank uh, Dominique on behalf of all of us for your report and for conducting the, the election. Uh, at this point, I'd like to introduce the new directors for the coming year. Uh, when I speak your name, would you each um, acknowledge and just give us a very brief history of yourself? Craig Collins. Uh, thank you, Peggy. Um, I wish to thank all of the voting members for the support in the election process and thank the nomination committee for doing a fantastic job. Um, Hello? Um, I accept and look forward to uh, contributing yeah, to the of ADC. And as someone that has been around for uh, many in many roles for many years, I believe that I bring an experience and knowledge and a common sense approach to the board. I hope I'm able to contribute and help provide our new board members with any background they require. I look forward to growing EC and ensuring clear pathways for the participants to voice their concerns in a meaningful method. I've had the pleasure of working with many of the EC staff members and appreciate their respect that they have graciously provided me. I look forward to working with them more closely uh, in the future. I also look forward to re-engaging with the dozens of volunteers whose expertise and all things equestrian is required for this organization uh, to thrive. Finally, I wish to thank the outgoing members of the Board of Directors for their service. Thank you. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Charles Q, please. Yeah, Charlie speaking, and uh, I'm probably the, the least horsey person of all the people that are involved in this. And uh, I come, I'm coming at it from a, a military background, which is uh, probably unusual. And my uh, background in the, as an ombudsman, working in an ombudsman's office, but uh, really I'm just coming at it because I, I saw an organization I truly believe uh, has a, a strong role to play in the, the community, uh, in the horse community, the equestrian community. Needed some uh, help, and I felt I had the skill sets to uh, step forward and uh, you know provide some objective viewpoints. I'm all about uh, transparency and uh, uh, ensuring that uh, you know the voice of the membership is heard. So uh, I'm hoping I can bring that. Uh, uh, that piece to, uh, to the board as well as. Uh, I've got a little bit of the East Coast time, so uh, it'll the East Coast representation to be uh, into the mix. Anyway, I really appreciate the vote of confidence that uh, the nomination committee gave, and I look forward to working for everybody. And I think that uh, very shortly we can uh, uh, produce some uh, uh, better results. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Meg Kruger. Uh, Meg Kruger. Hello. Um, Hello. Um, my name is Meg. I, I have managed uh, several equestrian facilities. Uh, sorry, it's a little distracting with the delay. Um, with experience that's extended through a lot of different disciplines from jumping, eventing, dressage, uh, even para, from both 
FEI through, FEI through the grassroots level. I've also, um, I've also managed writing uh, schools managed writing and school educational and clinics and series. Clinics. And worked extensively worked in developing extensively corporate sponsorships corporate for the sport. For the sport. So I look forward to look putting forward my, to experience my experience and my also my commitment to also transparency also and a positive culture, and, positive and culture. Uh, working and with the uh, board for the members. Board for the members. Thank you, Meg. Thank you, Meg. Rupert May, please. Rupert May, please. Well, hello everyone, uh, it's Rupert May, uh, I'm based in Langley, uh, British Columbia. Um, I am like you, I am not uh, very experienced at the senior levels of the question Canada, but uh, I do uh, have a very keen interest in uh, as a, a, a lower level uh, uh, inventor. Um, I won't echo all the other previous comments about thanking the outgoing board. Uh, all the voting members, because uh, they, they still apply. Uh, my background, uh, I'm a trust accountant. Uh, I'm uh, from England, I've lived in Canada 20 years, and uh, I used to be an auditor for an international accounting firm, so I'm, uh, I uh, understand where the KPMG uh, auditor was coming from. And in the last eight years, I've been uh, a CFO and co-founder of uh, a, a technology company. So I'm fairly experienced with some of the, uh, the sports uh, technology, but uh, I think more personally, uh, I bring, um, I am going to bring uh, a questioning mind uh, with uh, eyes wide open, uh, not looking for axes, so looking for to build to the future and to ensure there's clear transparency uh, to all. I think it's absolutely imperative for the future of uh, the question in Canada that uh, it has clear clear accounting, clear reporting, uh, no matter what, uh, how it is, it has to be clear to everyone. I look forward to assisting in any way I can in helping that happen. Thank you, Rupert. Robert Mitchell. Robert Mitchell. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very excited to be uh, part of the board. I might challenge Charlie that I'm uh, maybe less uh, horse experience than he does, but, but I have a lot of experience on uh, boards, both publicly traded boards and not-for-profit, and uh, have been a leader in uh, a not-for-profit not organization plus built uh, a business. So I think uh, that background and uh, my enthusiasm for this organization, I, I hope I can uh, contribute successfully to it. Thank you. Thank you. Carla Robin. Carla Robin. Thank you. I'm from Langley, British Columbia. And those who know me know I love horses and everything that comes with people. Over the years, I've acquired a really broad understanding of the sports, having been involved uh, in dressage, hunter, jumper, operation of equestrian facilities, show offices. I've also been on many boards for various levels of organizations. And currently, I am the executive director responsible for running harness racing on province of BC. I've done uh, a lot of negotiating with various agencies and government bodies in the last few years since I've been in that position. And I'm really excited to be working with the Custody of Canada. And I want to thank you for letting let me put my skills to use to see how I can move the organization forward. And there's been a lot of figures over the years. And I'm really up to the task of really helping a good group of people to make sure that a Custody is made as ever are really Kristen. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. Uh, Chris Sorensen. Chris Sorensen. Hello, it's uh, Chris Sorensen. Uh, I was uh, originally from Calhoun, Ontario. I currently live in uh, the Middle East. I previously ran a uh, hyper jumper business in Canada and the United States. And work for the national team, but to have a very we're uh, all in the horse industry, in the horse industry. My, family, my family, in racing, eventing, dressage, uh, lots to do with breeding, and uh, also the driving world. 
Uh, I've sat on previous uh, provincial boards and task forces for the National Federation and for provincial sports. And I hope to bring a lot of uh, industry experience uh, from around the world in my travels to the board. I personally think that the Federation sits at a massive inflection point and has a big opportunity to move in its great directions. And I'd like to thank uh, the support of everybody that uh, uh, voted and, and uh, managed the process. I look forward to working for the members and staff. And I'm very excited about the future board that uh, you guys have put together. I want to thank the old board. Thank you. I, uh, as I am actually part of the incoming board, but I uh, don't have anything prepared. I want to thank you for all, each and every one of you, for uh, joining our board. I'm looking forward to working with you very, very much. I think we have, uh, we're going to have a good balance, and I'm hoping that we have very positive aspects. I'd like to thank our departing members, who will be Tony Eames, uh, Deanna Phelan, and Liz Saunders, for being such upstanding, good, and engaged board members, as well as the board members that are remaining, which is Lisa Lazarus and Liz Saunders. Thank you, one and all. At this point, I'd like to. Um, no, I think that's. I have a motion for adjournment. I'll make that motion. It's Gord here. Thank you, Gord. Um, so, the board members, I think, are Dominique. And myself, not Liz. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry. Can, I can knew I that, too. <laughs> I'd, I'd like I'd like to add something, I'd like to add if, something possible. if possible. Certainly. Certainly. On a lighter note, I, I just want to say that I'm very sorry that I've been late on that call. Um, someone that at my door and um, <laughs> to deliver a brand new pickup truck. <laughs> That I've uh, that has been sent by my husband. So I had a million papers to sign. So at that point, I just decided that the thing I should do. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I was an hour late. Thank you, Dominic. Good night. Congratulations. Thank you. That's great. I'd like to say, if I may. If you are people who may be watching us on Facebook, if you have questions, you have just send to the board. Please do so. Please do so. And we will endeavor to and answer them. Answer them. So we will endeavor to answer them. We will post them. And we will post them in each and every interview. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Oh, just before there. you go, oh, just make sure everyone's clear. All right. Yes. The, the next yes. The meeting is adjourned until p.m. on October 12th. Yes, that's. There's yes, no that's, need to give additional uh, notice. Uh, so we will not give additional notice, but I think it would be wise to communicate with the people who were unable to attend this time to let them know that the meeting has been adjourned so they will have uh, notice of it. Yes, and we will have. Um, there will be additional notice and I'll be in contact with the board members incoming and hopefully starting tomorrow. Please don't use this system again. <laughs> you got my vote. Half of it we haven't been able to hear. I understand. We do understand. We do understand. Thank you very much. Thank you because we can't hear anything. Okay.